Shopify helps you sell at every stage of your business. Like that, let's put it online and see what happens stage. And the site is live. That we opened a store and need a fast checkout stage. Thanks, you're all set. That count it up and ship it around the globe stage. This one's going to Thailand. And that, wait, did we just hit a million orders stage? Whatever your stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 a month trial at shopify.com slash listen. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. In the year 247, in the age of judges, Vartan was summoned home after the death of his father. Upon his return, Vartan discovered something evil festering beneath the city of Eterno. With the help of some very unlikely allies, Vartan works to uncover the mysteries of his hometown and put an end to the nightmares that plague his people. Welcome to Ethereal Embrace. I'm Baya, and I'm not sure exactly what it would take for me to join a cult, but I can guarantee you one thing. If I ever did join a cult, coffee would definitely be involved. Day three. Um, they're coming. And he nods his head over to... Morrigan and Sean as they're approaching now. Hey, Vartan, I brought Sean up here. I think we're past the time for subterfuge. Yeah. But that does require a little bit of cooperation from Brass Kane. I, I know you're not going to like this, friend. <laughs> uh, I already hate it. <laughs> We filled in Morgan on some stuff, and she's on our side. On what we're trying to prevent. If you say so. Well, it sounds like the Robin is trying to get to the portal. Yeah. Yeah, we think the the Robin is trying. Hold on, Vart. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. She looks at Sean, because Sean is not... Not read in on any of this. Yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. only imagine her face is going, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sean, short version. Tormund's more than just a jackass. He may actually be genuinely evil. And we need to stop him from trying to do what I think he's trying to do. And that's why I have my concerns about Bree. These people can be trusted. And if you trust me, you can trust them. You know I trust you. But that is a pretty tall accusation about a robin. After what I've seen, believe me, it's not that tall. It seems like your robin's trying to evacuate the town so he can open a portal to where demons are going to come out. And I guess he's trying to get rid of the, the collateral damage. I mean, that doesn't seem too evil to try to protect protect the townsfolk to release well, demons yeah, the on the world closed. L- let's put it this way you know all that magic stuff he brought with him all that junk we had to haul across three weeks of travel yes he needs it to open the portal does that tell you how powerful that portal is it's the only way to open it alright I will trust you but I won't act against him until I see proof for myself Fair enough. We need to do our own investigation, and we cannot involve the other doves until we know where they stand. Brass Kane, you need to work with Sean here. I, I mean, do it for me, friend. Fine. I'll do it for you. I don't like it, though. Yeah, I don't... I'll be honest with you, Bastille. I don't think she likes you either. (laughs) But uh, this needs to stay between the five of us for right now. And not... 
Like last time, Brass King. Six of us. You guys forgot Tim Rooney oh, standing yeah. right behind him. And Tim Rooney. Oh, I guess he would think five of us. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, because <laughs> there's no Baya. So never mind. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Baya looks directly at Sean and says, We don't have to worry too much because the entrance to the portal has been you know we closed that a long time ago he can't get in there how did you close it it exploded interesting (laughs) well what do we need to do next Hmm. we need to figure out uh, I I think we need to look into the magic items like we didn't we never inspected all these... Well, I mean, we didn't know there was a bunch of... That all this stuff was being brought in. I wonder if some of those items might be part of the recipe. Do you have something I can use to lure him out of his room and maybe create a diversion for you to gain access to his room? I was thinking about demanding, but... um, I mean, this is our town. And if somebody's danger in it, we need to, or if somebody's a suspect at danger in it, we need to figure it out. But I guess we don't need them to know that we're on to them. We weren't allowed into the Robin's room. I am sure what we're looking for is behind that door. Is there anything, I don't know, Brass Cane, maybe can you come up with some reason to take him away from the area and take Bree as well. I could take him to the murder scene. Actually, if you take him to the murder scene, watch him. See if he's not shocked or if something sparks familiarity. Oh, make sure it's one of the bloody ones. I have my concerns about what his plans are. Definitely. We're concerned that it's not a coincidence that the Robin showed up at the same time as the cult. That's all. So. Well, this ought to be fun. (laughs) Oh, you'll have fun. You'll enjoy this part. (laughs) All right. So is that the plan? You go to Cody's, the, the brass cane, and Sean... Um, we'll go talk to Robin Torman and Dove Bree. Oh. Tell them about the murder scene. Have them come out of Cody's and and uh, give you access to their room. And Timurin set up the barn. Okay. All right. So the huddle comes to a close. You guys all go your separate ways. Um, Sean spearheads the conversation with Dove Bree, almost dragging Brass Cane along, which he didn't really have to act for because he didn't really want to be doing this to begin with. Uh, uh, Robin Torman gets very interested in the murder scene, and they are quick to follow. Timurin does go back to his barn to see that happening, to, to, to oversee the building of the structure. Tell Mika, who left you guys there already went to make a list for each one of the townsfolk to start working on the different uh, things they would need for their emergency bags. And you find yourselves in a pretty much empty inn. I mean, even Cody's out trying to help diffuse the situation that that's happening with the townsfolk trying to like help people out he's giving people food and he's, news travels you know, fast trying to calm people yep yeah <laughs> so he's helping the best he knows how um so yeah the inn is pretty much wide open yeah all right let's go check out this room and see exactly what it is he brought with him yeah can I roll to see if there's any magic or anything on the door? You most certainly can. Arcana? Yeah, either Arcana or um, 
investigation. It doesn't uh, matter. I rolled a nat one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Only once. So you don't find any magic on the door whatsoever. All right. She reaches for the handle and turns it. The door is locked, though. <laughs> hmm. Wasn't expecting that. I reach for the handle and really turn it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to you need to make a strength check on the door handle. All right, I got this. A seventeen on breaking the the door handle and lock. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you. <laughs> The the door handle is not a round handle. It's the kind that's got like the the you know wing that slides out from it. So you just push harder and harder and harder down until the mechanism on the inside snaps, <laughs> and the winged handle just kind of goes limp and and drops down to you know where the clock hand would be at six o'clock, and the internal workings fall into the center of the door and you can walk right in. <laughs> all right. Man, I feel like all I give you guys is investigation rolls, but all you're doing is looking for things to investigate. <laughs> so <laughs> investigation to <laughs> look for where his shit is. 15. Okay. So Bias sees a small chest hidden in a little corner area of the room. Try it, you know, half-heartedly covered up. But it's got some ornate decorations on it and a rune right on the front that you do recognize as magic. What is the rune? It, it's a uh, an alarm spell. So if somebody trips it, it'll make a loud noise. Like a really loud noise. <laughs> Well, there's the probably the magic item. Uh, does anyone know how to dispel an alarm spell? Does it only trip if we open it? I, I would assume. I mean, uh, maybe if you threw it against a wall, it might trip as well. Uh, why don't we just take it? Then um, he doesn't have it. And then we can figure out how to get into it. Well, we could just burn it. I mean, that would probably set the alarm off, but at least it will be destroyed, right? Hopefully. We don't know exactly which items he has. So it's possible fire won't destroy them? She, like, readies a fireball in her hand. Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe if you could just burn off the rune? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I could no. pick that up. But will that set off the alarm? Did we say that? Yeah, you could pick it up. It shouldn't set up off the alarm unless you throw it. How the alarm spell typically works. I rolled pretty low on my investigation um yeah I'll pick it up You're like alright well, I guess we're going with Morgan's plan you pick it up I guess uh we'll run yeah maybe they'll think the cultists took nothing it nothing happens so no no alarms go off nothing nothing <laughs> you know <laughs> over the top goes off you're fine but it might be in his head the alarm might be in his head. Remember, we did that. Yeah, the the little jingle. Do, 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 do. You know. Yeah. yeah. We we did that. Uh, we set that in case somebody came into the cave. We well, should when... probably run. Yeah, we should probably, probably... run. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where should we take this thing? <laughs> Do you want to put it in your room for now? It's close. Yeah, that'd probably be the easiest. But... Uh, he can check. Sean can cover for us. He, he, he'll check the other rooms, but it might buy us some time. And I don't know, you guys know people in town. Maybe you know someone who can dispel the trap. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Unless oh. it already went off in his head. 
That is the concern. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's proximity, is a, though. Is there a card outside of Cody's? I don't remember. Uh, let's just let's go to your room real quick, and we'll figure it out from there. Okay. Let's get out of this. I think we need to get out of the tavern and get to my house. We can put it. There's a wheelbarrow outside of Cody's. Is there a tarp? Yeah. Let's let's wheelbarrow and tarp it. All right, and just straight to your house. Yeah, let's run. We are terrible criminals. <laughs> That's because we're no, all we're, good we're, people. We're not criminals. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Let's go. All right. We're gonna go through the garden. Sneak around the garden. <laughs> okay. All right. So you go through the garden and you slip around the Temple of the Twelve, and you're wheeling this wheelbarrow with a chest in it and uh, a thing covered over the top of it uh, a tarp covered over the top of it and yeah you make it um, all the way back to your house without incident because the three people that you passed all rolled really low so <laughs> yes. just be like oh, just, just getting some supplies from Cody no. <laughs> we're about to take him to the Take him to the barn. Make sure you head down that way. Mm. (laughs) Our heroes will be right back after these messages. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. Laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, listeners. If you are enjoying the show and would like to take a look at a way to support the cast while getting yourself some nice perks please consider our Patreon. We offer ad-free listening as well as this entire season if you select the binge tier or higher on our Patreon. Plus, you'll be directly supporting our cast for their work, as our team over at Creative Typo have begun to pay our voice actors for our performances. So check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash creative typo. I would also like to give a big shout out to our executive producer from Patreon, Nick Mead. Thank you, Mead. We truly appreciate your support. Now, back to the town of Eterno. So you get back to your house, and you're home alone. It's, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Morgan. Morgan, uh, do you remember how to get to the portal? one in your basement oh okay well that yeah i was just checking Mm. okay (sighs) thank you do you know where the basement door is no wasn't paying attention okay okay oh that's even better good good follow up there by oh here's the uh i'm gonna dig around in my bag a little i got a lot of stuff in my bag now (laughs) oh here's the rainbow egg this should work i don't think we'll need to get emery and I'm gonna cast a spell on the chest. Do you throw it? Yeah, just just crush it in your hand when the the egg knows that you want to use it, and it will crush in your hand. All right, and I'm just gonna crush it easily, just and sprinkle it, I guess. Yeah. On the chest. And while he's sprinkling, while he's sprinkling these these rainbow stone pieces, Morgan's just going to look at him in utter disbelief. That was in your bag the whole time. <laughs> really? 
Well, I didn't think about it till we were here. <laughs> right. Okay. Sure. The rune goes away and the <laughs> uh, chest unlocks itself. Because oh. it was a rune of warding on the chest and it was an arcane lock on the chest. So both dissipate. I'm going to brush all the pieces off my hand and reach over and grab a like a chunk of bread and be like, uh, whoever wants to open it. I guess I'll take a look. <laughs> Inside is a glass. It appears to be glass, some sort of glass. Onyx colored large heart. And it has two nails hammered into it. And I will give to anyone who wants to try and identify this an arcana check, a DC 15. I got it. Yeah. Oh, I got a nat 20. Yeah, I got a 21. Ooh. Morgan sucks. Which would have been a, (laughs) a 25. Wisdom. Yeah, so. so you both recognize this, something you've never seen in person before, but it is a dragon's heart. And then the two nails pounded into it are strategically placed to preserve and harness the magic energy from it. So the heart itself can recharge and store magic energy. That's all that's in there. Yeah. Wow. So that's a big heart. Yeah, it's a big heart. Well, why don't we pull the nails out and then put it back without the nails? What would happen if we do that? I I don't know, but I know that these nails are strategically placed so that way this dragon's heart can continue to be magical and not just die. So we could take the nails out and like let it die and set the nails in the in the chest like it just happened, you know? Like uh, during travel. Um, And then I don't have a way to do the warding spell back, but then we just put it back like we found it and nobody's the wiser and the town is safer possibly until he finds another magical item uh, and we don't get we don't have to fight a robin oh well I mean I've never dealt with a dragon heart before but is is it gonna be that easy to just pull them out Bai reaches in and tries to pull the nail out. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a D100. Ooh. Okay. F- 58. So wild magic surges when you try to pull the nail out of the heart. For the next minute, any flammable object you touch that isn't being worn or carried by another creature bursts into flames. Did I successfully pull the nail? You did not. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Oh man, uh, I'm holding. I can't the... I'm pull it out. Taking a bite of that bread. <laughs> <laughs> it turns to toast. <laughs> oh, ow! What 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 just happened to my bread? It just burst into flames. Well, you were trying to pull that nail out. There, there's something going on. Let me, let me detect magic. I'm gonna use my furbolg magic. Okay. Just, I guess I can at least learn what school of magic the heart is. But I'm also looking around because something just set the bread on fire. The the nails are being powered by transmutation. Mm -hmm. 
and the heart is both powered by necromancy and divination. Oh, man. When I tried to pull the nail out, I did feel a weird surge go through my body. Did anybody else feel that? Oh, my hand got burnt. Your bread turned to toast. Uh, okay. Well, that's not going to work. I, that, that plan... And, uh, Is there any- went up in flames. <laughs> so that heart, it's glowing kind of dark and light. Like, like there's some kind of necromancy going on and maybe some divination. Does it sound right? Would there happen to be any writing on it that I might be able to see? Like, I don't know, keep the instruction manual close? <laughs> <laughs> On the heart? Yes, on the heart or on the nails. <laughs> uh, there, There is some rune work on the nails, but it's only partially because the runes obviously go down the entire nail and half of the nail is buried into the heart. So, Tra- Transmutation, okay. it's got that light to it. I don't know what, how to do all that magic, but I mean, I played around with my furbog magic a little bit. I definitely know necromancy magic when I see it. Would you happen to know anyone who might be moderately learned on this stuff? I mean, bye. Well, so here's the thing is that Robin Tormund is a Robin for the Church of Greyhawk. So I'm sure they have catacombs of magic items true that they have you know uh, acquired over the years does the church of greyhawk normally use necroman- necromantic magic that's not my department and I, I wouldn't think so but I, I don't know I mean I I, I fight I investigate, but, I mean, magic is really out of my realm. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing. Even if they didn't create this, they could have, you know, picked it up at some point. Yeah. And Robin Tormund would have access to it. I am not sure what what we can do to stop the Robin even if we get him to leave now that doesn't mean that he won't come back I don't know how adamant he is about getting into the portal but if he knows about it and he wants to go in he must know something he brought something with him that has enough power to open it and keep it open he definitely he definitely know something hmm. and I think we need to figure out what he knows but I I'm not a mind reader and I don't even know how we would begin to ask about this I can help with that huh you can read minds directed at Vartan <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Baya casts the spell on Morrigan and says, just think what your favorite color is. Don't say it out loud. Blue. It's blue. Oh. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. (laughs) Wish I could do that. (laughs) Well, do we need to carry this back or something, or we hiding it? Let's we, hide it. We can't take it back. We broke the door. It, he's going to know somebody was in there, and it, it can't be there. Oh. <laughs> and unless we can repair the rune and the lock, there's no point in even putting the empty chest back. So, can we, I don't there's got to be somewhere we can put it that he can't get to. The basement has the spell on it that P- 
people don't ever see the basement. I'm going to touch the lid to close it. Has it been over a minute? Because it was yeah, a minute, I, I right? Yeah. It was more than a Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. and, uh, it doesn't burst to flames. Pick the chest up and carry it downstairs. Probably put it. I don't know if we can, if I can get it over in the trap area or not. Yeah, you can. Yep. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll put it where the, the trap, the traps will protect it as well as the magic that keeps people out. Put an old quilt over it. <laughs> yeah. Bring the tarp Just down. Just take the tarp down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw dirt Stole over it so it looks like it's been there for a while. <laughs> Bye. Go get the tarp. thank you for listening to this episode of ethereal embrace a creative typo production vartan the furbog fighter is voiced and played by adam culbertson baya rustin the half elf sorcerer is voiced and played by tisha morrigan the human monk is voiced and played by nari kwok and I am Nico, your GM. Please remember to drop us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcatcher. Music provided in part by Midnight Syndicate, makers of the original Dungeons & Dragons soundtrack. If you would like to support our show or any of our other shows, you can join our family of patrons at patreon.com forward slash creative typo. Remember, be safe, we love you all, and stay foolish.